Welcome to the Topsail Insider Podcast, where locals, vacationers, and those looking to relocate to the greater Topsail area can hear all about the wonderful businesses and events in our beautiful coastal Carolina beach towns, including Topsail Island, Surf City, Hampstead, Holly Ridge, and Sneeds Ferry. Coming up, I'll be talking to Miss Jill Wiles, the owner of Scallywags. Scallywags is a great bar on Topsail Island, just a few blocks north of the pier. It's one row off the beach in Surf City, North Carolina. Scallywags is really a one of a kind bar. You're going to hear how Jill overcame a health crisis and is now honoring and giving back to the first responders while also providing an incredible music venue for the locals and the tourists alike. So sit back and hang out with Jill and me, maybe grab a beer or some sweet tea and hear all about Scallywags. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Topsail Insider Podcast. My name is Krista, and I am your host. Today, I am interviewing a wonderful lady. Her name is Jill Wiles, and she is the owner of Scallywags in Surf City, North Carolina. How are you doing, Jill? I am doing fantastic. How are you? Wonderful. I am, and thank you for doing this. So I want to say you just had your one year anniversary of Scallywags and you threw a big, really successful party. And I was coming here to grab a few sound bites and I was going to meet you. (laughs) And you were hustling so hard that if you went to the back, I would go to the back to try to reach you and you were already back (laughs) to the front again. So I couldn't reach you, but I did enjoy my time here and I met a lot of cool folks. So why don't you go ahead and tell me a little bit about Scallywags and what it is that makes you stand out from all the rest. The biggest part I would say is we are a first responder bar. We started out focused on firemen. My son is a Surf City fireman, but it has definitely blossom into all first responders because I think they are drastically underappreciated. That is such an amazing thing. I did the pre-interview and you talk about how much you treasure the first responders. So I want to hear more about that. I also want to hear about this is not just a bar. It Mm -hmm. is a big time music venue and you're really set up nicely for that. How did this start and then how has it expanded over time to become what it is today? Okay, so that's definitely a unique story. A little over two years ago, I got very sick and could not figure out why I was bedridden. It was a long journey. Yeah. My son was a new fireman and even though he was new, those firemen were amazing. Knowing how sick I was, they would reach out, check on me, helped any way they could. One fireman in particular, Bob, he was actually the very first fireman who literally took me to the side and said, your family. And wow, that's why it was so important for me to have a concert here for him. Mm-hmm. And we helped raise over $26,000 for him. That's amazing. He had stage four lymphoma, beat it, and then ended up coming home and dying in his sleep. It was oh, very difficult. So sorry to hear that. Thank you. I, he, he was incredible, but all the firemen, they are just amazing individuals. And I did not realize the camaraderie. And when you are a part of the firefighter family, that you are a part of the family, you really are. And once I finally started figuring out what was wrong with me and getting better, my husband and I, he just happened to see this place and he was like, let's go take a look at it. And Mm -hmm. I'm like, we need another establishment, like a hole in the head. I was like, okay, if we're going to do this, I want it to have purpose and meaning. So if we take this on, I want to be able to give back to these amazing individuals who were there for me in a time of need. I love that. So that's how we started. And then uh, I quickly learned all first responders are just amazing individuals. And I started bringing them in more as Mm -hmm. bartenders. And now... Oh, they work here as well. Every single one of my bartenders are first responders That's or so cool. they have previously been first responders. They have been there within that family and it's incredible. My staff is amazing. They're very important to me. They do not take a whole lot of drama mm. and which I love. <laughs> 
It is family oriented. We allow families here. My kids would love to hang out in this, the sandy backyard that you've created. Yes. And that's all ages. No one under 21 is allowed on the premises without a parent or guardian. As long as they have a parent or guardian, come have a great time. And that's really why I created this, just to have a unique experience. The small pub of donating back to the fire department was how it started. Mm -hmm. And then three months into it, um, everyone loves the story. I went to get my nails done. Yeah. I've been going to the same nail salon for five years. Amazing lady who does my nails. I absolutely love her. I was sitting there complaining about these people who are ripping out all the shrubs that were on the back lot uh -huh. behind my establishment. Yeah. And happened to say, do you happen to know who's opening a nail salon on the island? She said, my husband. It turned out they weren't sure what they were going to do with the property. So we made arrangements with them. And then we found out it was a double lot, not a single lot. Oh, and wow. It's like, what in the world am I going to do with this much space? Yeah. Okay. And it was my son. He said, let's put sand. I love and that. And it just grew from there. I love live music. I love having fun. So I started bringing in more music. And because we had so much space, I had more unique people reaching out to me mm -hmm. about playing here. It's and a big stage. We can hold up to 500 people. So we have, I would say, the largest event space in Surf City. And I want it to be, yes, we get tourists, but... Buddies, our other establishment, that is absolutely a tourist location. Yes, locals come there just like tourists come here and we welcome them. Right. But I am focused on locals. I'm fo focused on a unique space for locals and donating back as much as we possibly can to the local community. Mm -hmm. That is what this that's entire wonderful. place stands for. So I, I think that's great. I really do. Thank you are you. going to get your tourists. We're coming up on high season right now. Yes, You're going to be are. packed. But Friday night, there definitely was a local vibe here, for sure. Yeah. Everyone lived here and loved it here, and we're just laid back and having such a great time. The music exactly. was incredible. Thank you. Hey. So with that big stage back there, you're attracting really good artists. I'm seeing your post on Facebook. You're getting a lot of different artists coming in here. I am. And actually, we filled up very fast. Last year, I only had music on Friday and Saturday. My Friday and Saturday is completely booked up until September. Wow. And I still have four or five reaching out to me every day. I was wondering about that. Every I was like, day. how is she doing it? She must be not just hustling during the business hours, which I witnessed myself, but you must be hustling in your downtime trying to get all these artists, but they've come to you. They do come to me That's on the regular awesome. and I try to get back to them. We just did a big expansion here with mm -hmm. the new pergola. We actually have a brand new walk-in cooler coming very soon. We bought a food truck. <laughs> My goal is to, if, if I have to do a cover charge, I want it to be as, as little as possible because some of these bands and unique acts that are coming in are mm -hmm a lot of money. It is not my intent to do that. So right. as much as possible, I don't want to do that. So bringing in the food truck and having that extra income on top of what we do here, I still need to be able to give back, but I want to not have to have everyone pay to come. Right. I'm trying not to do a cover charge, but know that if I have a cover charge, it's because I absolutely need to. There's another thing coming very soon that I will tell you April 17th. Uh -huh. We close on the lot right beside here. Okay. Oh my gosh. That is exciting. So what? It, what's the plan with that property? Uh, that's where our food truck will go. More parking. You are growing really fast. Yeah. If that was your one year anniversary on Friday night, girl, mm -hmm. it's amazing. And that is, is what it's like every night in the, on the weekends in the summer. The nice part about it is it was packed, but you didn't feel it. No, no, it wasn't. There's you so didn't much feel space. It. It, it's so much space. You have so much space to move around in. And now that we have the outside bar, that was also one of the downsides is when I only had the inside bar, that line would just be out the door and I hated people yeah. being forced to wait. So the outside bar was a necessity. Let me just paint a picture for folks that haven't been here yet. So when you drive up the front of Scallywags, is it looks like it's like old school surf city. It's got that front porch. And I don't know, in the South, we love our front porches. <laughs> yeah. 
the temperature was amazing. The breeze was so nice. It's like you grab a beer, you get on that front porch and you just hang out and you can literally hear the waves. It's so yes, nice. Yes, you absolutely can. When you go on the porch, you come inside, there's a nice bar inside. And another unique story about the inside, all the patches that are all over the border and everything inside the downstairs bar. Uh-huh. We're probably about 80% now, but when we first opened, 100% of those patches were donated by Surf City Fire Chief himself. Really? It was his personal collection. I felt so honored he gave that collection to me. Now I have people from all over coming in and they add their patches to the wall. Okay. I have police patches, fire patches, military patches. It's so just, wonderful. And it just keeps growing. And I love that they come and put that a little piece of their place yeah. here at Scallywags. So if you walk down to the side, you have created a nice space along the side. You've got tables and chairs there. So there's mm-hmm. plenty of space to sit there. It's a little quieter. You can get your food at the food truck and sit down and have dinner you keep walking down the path down the side of the house and you end up in that sandy, it's like a sandy beach back there. And yeah. you've got some nice beach chairs, benches, cornhole. It's lovely. And outside then bar. It looks like in the very back corner, it looks like a lifeguard station. Yep. That is actually an official Riceville Beach lifeguard stand. No. I, I love it. So Buddies in Riceville Beach actually sponsored a lifeguard stand. So they have a plaque that goes on the back of their lifeguard stands down mm-hmm. there. And when Buddy passed away, it wasn't even a full year that he had been gone. And Wrightsville Beach were refurbishing their lifeguard stands. And it was first come, first serve (gasps) to get those old lifeguard stands. And we were able to get one. So I bought my husband a lifeguard stand and we put it at our house in Scotts Hill. When we sold the house in Scotts Hill, I'm like, oh my word, what in the world are we doing with a lifeguard stand? (laughs) It you ended found a perfect I, home yes, for it. It is here. It looks, Scallywags. it's perfect back there. I it, loved it. People and do people love in it. They really do love it. And they weren't moving. It. No, they They're don't. Like, they really don't. They we sit got there here and it's ours for the night. <laughs> Someone go get me a beer. <laughs> so funny because my mother, when she comes to visit from PA, she, that's her spot. That's her hut. Oh yeah. She, and then tell me about the bar that, so you walk on around past the stage and then you come upon the outdoor bar. So tell me about when that was added. That was actually always there, oh, it was. but it wasn't always fully open because I'm still learning and I'm still like, we didn't have a cooler. We had big bins of ice. And so then I just stopped opening it. Now I have a big cooler full of a lot more inventory that I can have out there. You have a lot more variety that you can get a lot of the simmer items you can get inside. I see. You can get liquor out there. So now you can get your liquor drinks. It's basically everything except draft beer and wine. Oh, okay. Is this the first business you've ever owned? I was a realtor before I got sick. And I put my license on hold. And before that, I was a human resource information system specialist. I I was a nine to five. Whole new realm here. Oh, oh my word, yes. So tell me, as an entrepreneur and you're one year into it, what has been the biggest hurdle opening up a business of your own? It's consuming. I actually enjoy the fact that it's consuming. I don't necessarily know how to put that divide and have time for family. I have family out of town and they're constantly saying, why don't you ever call? I have a 16 year old son. And right. there are times that he's, Hey mom, I need food in the house. And yeah. I'm like, Oh, I forgot to go to the grocery <laughs> store. It's the work life balance, which I always thought I was very good at. Mm-hmm. And here I'm so focused on trying to do everything I can to make Scallywags the best it can that I forget that, that there has to be a balance. I'm a Virgo type A OCD (laughs) and then bedridden. How long were you bedridden? (sighs) And when was it? Did you start the bar and then that happened? No, I got sick January, 2021. Okay. And got so bad to the point that I could barely get to the bathroom or making food. Mm -hmm. I couldn't make it into the kitchen. If I didn't have a meal ready for me, I didn't eat. Right. Wow. And my husband was running the restaurant and trying to help me as much as he could Mm -hmm. and trying to maintain and, and, 
keep my children. Alex, he was still living at home. And then once he got his own place, I still, I couldn't help him. I said I would make him an Ottoman. I'm, I love like taking old things and making them new again. Mm-hmm. And I would be sitting on our deck and trying to sand it, crying oh. because I, I had no energy. Mm-hmm. I would be passing out for no reason. And you couldn't figure out what it was. No. One time I have an Apple watch and I passed out on our deck and my dog was literally laying right beside me and I woke up and so embarrassing, but woke up to all these firemen standing oh, around me that my watch called 911 for me. <gasps> no way. It does that. Yes. I didn't know it did that. Yeah. I didn't either <laughs> until then. And I was like, and it also calls my emergency contact. And at that time... It's my son, Mm -hmm. but my health is still, when I push myself to a point that I crash, Mm -hmm. I have to shut everything out and just focus on myself. Yes. Managing that on top of this and family, sometimes it does get overwhelming, but I am so determined to, to do this and I want to do this and make it someplace that everybody loves to come. Can we say what your diagnosis was? Sure. Are you, are you comfortable? Uh, oh yeah. I mean, it's cause I a, can't say it. So you're going to have yeah, to say it. it. It's a mixture of things, but autonomic hyperactivity, but it's a neurological disorder that led to something called POTS, postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome. See, I told you I would never be yeah. able to say that. And that's just one of the things that they discovered, but that is one of the main things they discovered mm-hmm. that a lot of people are discovering they have. And One of the good things that has come out of COVID, and I did not develop it because of COVID, but there are a lot of individuals who had COVID that are now getting diagnosed with what I have, which is drawing attention to what I have. Yeah. And now more doctors are starting to understand it. Mm -hmm. And, And that's, it's hard when something's wrong, but you have all these other doctors who are telling you, you're fine. We can't figure it out. We don't know. It's mental. It's all in your head. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's a very debilitating thing to hear. It is. I understand that. I get that. I know that was hard, but you look amazing now. Whatever you're doing, keep doing it because the energy that it took to hustle on a Friday night (laughs) was not that of someone who was down and out. Let me tell you. Yeah. To wrap up here, I want to ask you, are there any events that are coming up that you want to make an announcement about? Sure. So I actually have two very important and very special to me events coming up. Okay. One will be in June, the beginning of June. It will be on a Thursday night, which I know seems odd, but it comes from a phenomenal artist with which anybody who has been here last year knows I do bring this amazing musician and his name is Rob Benton. He travels up and down the East Coast. He was on America's Got Talent. He's really incredible. Yes. And if anybody knows about an organization called Surfers Healing, they bring in children who are autistic and kind of take them away from the troubles and everything that they have to go through every day and mm-hmm. get them out on the water and teach them to surf and just have a day where they don't have to be reminded of all the troubles and the daily yeah. life struggles that they have to go through. That's wonderful. They are an incredible organization. So what's this organization again? It's called Surfers Healing. Surfers Healing. So okay. I'm bringing the two together, Mr. Rob Benton and Surfers Healing, and we will be doing an event here, a Surfers Healing Benefit with okay. Rob Benton playing. That's wonderful. Bringing the whole I want to be here for that. I am very excited about so that. So that's the first week of June on a Thursday. Nice. Yes. Okay. And then the other very special event that is very near and dear to my heart is anybody who has been in Surf City knows the absolute biggest event that goes on in Surf City every October is Ocean Fest. Ocean the Fest. Ocean okay. Fest. It's a big festival. The organizers of Ocean Fest, they're incredible people and Every penny that they raise Mm -hmm. during Ocean Fest goes back to helping the ocean, keep the ocean clean. The biggest event. How is Scallywags participating in that? We do a big after party here on both nights as the event goes on. But they bring in incredible musicians. They have booths set up everywhere where they have vendors and where you can shop. You watch the surfers, big surfer competition. I believe they also do a 5K run. It's a massive event. Last year I started, I wanted to do something to help them out. I said, Hey, what can I do to help you guys? 
starting something like that, having funds up front so that they can start paying these people before they even get a penny in the door, they donate everything back. So it's not like they have this unlimited amount of funds. Right. I did an Ocean Fest luau here in August. Oh, I love that idea. Yes. I want to be here for that one too. <laughs> it is a lot of fun and we donate back. Everything that we make goes back to them. Uh, I think it, it was like a $25 at the door, but we had incredible musicians, a lot of fun. What and a great idea. That. I also bring, I bring in reggae music and try to do a fun luau event. And that will be, I believe we just set the date for August 26th. Okay. It's, so I will be doing another Ocean Fest luau event. Very exciting, but really every weekend is a concert here. One fun thing that we do is I have a stack of cards here, and these are called talking point cards. And I use these at the table with my boys so we can have something fun to talk about at the table that's out of the norm. And so I thought it would be fun. Just pick one up, read it out loud. Would you rather be able to fly or turn invisible? (laughs) Oh my gosh, I want both. (laughs) When everybody is trying to reach me and I just want to hide, which you'll notice when I'm here, if I'm not being pulled in 20 different directions, I'm usually sitting on the back stairs away from everyone, but I'm usually just taking it all in. It's not that I'm avoiding anyone. I just love watching everybody here having a fantastic time. That really is the best joy ever. So invisible, but if you could fly anywhere. But seriously, who does (laughs) not want to fly? Fly, right? If you could fly anywhere right now, where would it be? Oh, the keys. I love the Florida Keys. Yeah, I'm with you. My husband and I got married in Key Largo. Oh, wow. Okay. And so we have a very special connection down there. But nice. I just want to fly anywhere just to be able to get up and fly and not have to drive. Get up, yeah. Up, surf City traffic in the summer. Yeah. Yeah. I hope That's, you have a wonderful summer here. I think it's... Thank you so much. I think much. you're going to be amazing. You're going to do amazing. You already have. I love that you give back. I love the first responders. I love everything about this bar. And I want to say it's been so nice getting to know you. But I would like to say what you're doing here, I hope this is successful and it's needed. I love that you are taking the time to get to know these great establishments. Thank you. And that is very important. So I wish you luck and and as well. The response has been really great. People need to hear this. We have so many shops that are popping up in Surf City and Hampstead. Yes. Even us needs Ferry. There are some amazing establishments and great so owners. So many. And we are a close knit community. Mm-hmm. We're just one big family. And yeah. I it's important like, that we help each other out. Yes. You know, business is helping businesses. And that's, that's the, the way, way it should, should be. be. Uh, yes, exactly. <laughs> oh, I love you, Jill. Thank you so much. Everybody, if you will please come and check out Scallywags, you can look on their Facebook page. She's very active on Facebook and lists all the upcoming events, all of the people who are going to be singing here and performing. And the address here is 121 North Shore Drive in Surf City. And the email address is scallywags121 at gmail.com. The phone number here is 910-928-8017. She just looked at me like, I don't know. Uh, Our other address is actually 122 North Topsail Drive for the parking in the back. That's where the parking is in the back. Gotcha, gotcha. So check out Facebook and come check out this great place. I think you're going to love it. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, Jill. Thank you. For being on my podcast. And I will see you all around Topsail. Perfect. Bye, everybody. Bye. Hey, thank you for joining me today on Topsail Insider. If you liked today's episode, please hit the follow or subscribe button so that you can get the Topsail Insider podcast delivered automatically to whichever podcast platform you're listening on. And if you're a business owner and you wish to set up a pre interview or you want to advertise, please email me at topsailinsider at gmail.com. Please also find and like the Topsail Insider Facebook page. I provide links to the new podcast there each week, as well as providing photos of the businesses that I'm highlighting along with any of their upcoming events. So, hey, let's do this again next week. I'll see you around Topsail.